Hi, I'm Dave from BoyInTheBand.com and welcome to day two of the seven day studio where I'll be showing you how to make a beginner's studio using my home slice Kieran here as a convenient guinea pig. Here's a stale cookie for you Kieran. Oh awesome. Today in day two we'll be looking at the beating heart of the home studio, the sound card. Do you know what a sound card is Kieran? I, I guess, but I was thinking more this variety. Maybe I should call it an audio interface instead, since it doesn't look much like a card. The audio interface allows you to take sounds and signals from the real world and put them into your computer, enabling you to record live vocals, instruments, and if you've got a really powerful mic, people's thoughts. I want a cheese sandwich. So Kieran and I had a look around to find out what was out there. When you go looking, here are a few things to keep in mind. A lot of home studio audio interfaces are USB, which is really convenient if you aren't inclined to open up your computer and go poking around, like you would with a traditional sound card. However, some of the higher end ones in particular use Firewire or other similar connection cables, so make sure your computer has the right connection for your audio interface. Two, if you intend to record vocals, make sure your sound card has phantom power. Some of the cards don't have this, it's usually referred to as plus 48 volts phantom power, and it'll be a little button on the front of the interface. This allows you to power condenser microphones, which I'll talk about in depth later, but basically they record vocals really clearly compared to other types of microphones. And three, Branston Pickle is delicious on cheese sandwiches. So here are a few of the sound cards we found. The Focusrite Sapphire 6 audio interface, M Audio's Fast Trek 2, and the Pod Studio UX1. After a good hour of searching, masticating and discussion, we made our decision. We've gone for the Focusrite Sapphire 6 audio interface. So let's take a closer look at what it has to offer. It's got two XLR and quarter inch jack inputs, meaning you can plug in, for instance, two microphones, a mic and a guitar, or a stereo synthesizer. This is a really important part of an audio interface, since it's difficult to plug a vocalist directly into a computer. We've got the phantom power we mentioned earlier, so we can use condenser microphones and gain knobs so we can boost their volume as they come into the computer. Really useful if you're recording something really quiet. There's a headphone socket so we can do some late night composition without angering neighbours and we've also got the monitor volume so we can change the speaker volume nice and easily while we're mixing. On the back we've got MIDI inputs useful for playing virtual synths and samplers with MIDI devices which I'll talk about later on and several outputs on the back which Kieran thought would be really useful if you wanted to try playing live. This goes for both DJs who could run different mixes into the house PA and to himself for the monitoring and for musicians like Kieran who have electronic backing tracks with a click track to keep them in time and an output for the PA. Another thing to mention is the preamps. These are inside the device so you can't see them unless you have thermal vision and they're really hot for some reason. A preamp is what boosts the audio signal when you turn up the game. Different sound cards have different quality preamps. Some will make a lot of hiss and noise when you turn the game too high, but Focusrite are known for having good quality preamps that don't give off much excess noise. I was recommended to use them from a mastering engineer I know. While we're talking about invisible things that are good, let's take a look at air. I'm joking. Years of ceaseless carbon pollution has distorted it beyond sustainability, so let's move swiftly on to balanced inputs. Obviously you can see the inputs, but the balanced part is what's important. I won't go into too much detail because I think Kieran's brain is already about to explode, but balanced inputs basically give less noise and hum than unbalanced ones particularly with long cables, which is cool because long cables can also be used as makeshift lassoes. It uses a USB mm. connection to plug into your computer as well. No need for Firewire here. Also, a lot of sound cards come with free light versions of software just to get you started. These don't have all the functions of the full software, obviously, but are great for learning the basics until you're ready to splash out on a full version. Remember, this isn't necessarily the best choice for everyone. We didn't go for the pod because it lacked phantom power, and we didn't go for the M Audio one because it only had the one output. Also, neither of those two had MIDI inputs, meaning we'd have to get another device if we wanted to use a MIDI controller that didn't have its own USB input. Since it had quite a few more options for not much more in terms of price, as well as those really good preamps, we decided to splash out the bit extra. So Kieran, how does that tally up on the budget so far? £149. And the total? We only have one thing so far. Doesn't matter, total? £149. Okay, and if we were to have a super budget version of the studio, I'd recommend that M Audio Fast Track 2 for £89. So, what's the super budget studio total, Kieran? £89. That's awesome sauce. So there we have our audio interface chosen. If you liked this video, hit like. 
and then join us in day three, where we'll take a look at some music production software. Exciting times, eh, Kieran? I sure do. What? <laughs>